Who's first? Rocco's first tonight. There's Eric. Fisherman 83. Chops bearded. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> sorry about the time change. I was going to do 6.30 and I got home too late from work. And then uh, I was going to wait till 7.30. And then I was like, well, I'm ready. So I may as well start. Night Fisher Custom Baits. What kind of custom baits you got, Night Fisher? You make your own stuff? Bryson. Hello. Chris Hill's in the house. What up, man? Haven't talked to you lately. How you doing? <laughs> oh, get your fish on. Uh, all right, that's Steve there with Get Your Fish On, and he and I are going to be doing a tackle swap like I did with Burley the other day. Steve and I are going to do one as well. And it should be very interesting. Steve has got all kinds of connections in the Get Your Fish On. He's got all kinds of connections. And uh, he's got access to all kinds of tackle. So that'll be really fun. Barker, how's it going? Mechanically CNC hand poured ultra soft plastic reinforced four inch swim baits. Holy cow. Night Fisher. I'm doing good, Chris. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Let me say that again. Let's click on that. Night Fisher Custom Baits makes mechanically CNC hand poured ultra soft fabric reinforced four inch swim baits. All right, so let's break this down. It's a four inch swim bait, ultra soft hand poured, kind of like a robo worm. That's ultra soft. I don't know if it's, I don't know what mechanically CNC means. And then somehow he's using fabric to reinforce the soft plastic. Crazy. Oh, here's another comment from him. Reprogrammed a fleet of 3D printers to pour swim baits automatically. Bam. Man, you might get along good with Eric. I think he's a, a technical, technical dude, Mr. Brewer. Oh, man, and he's having a birthday. The big 3-0. Well, happy birthday, Eric. That's cool. Barker's saying something about binding chatterbait wires. <laughs> yeah, right on. Well, that's what it is. He's saying it's robo worm. It's like robo worm plastic. So, Mr. Bass, I tried the finesse stuff, the Ned and Dark Sleeper and smaller baits, and still nothing up here in Jersey. Still trying to figure out the pattern. Man, Matthew's like our... Uh, Matthew, I think instead of giving you fishing tips, we're going to have to put a couch out here and just give you some sort of psychological counseling to help you deal with your struggles, man, because I'm about out of ideas. But we could, we, we could, try, we could try to make you feel better. Uh... That's crazy. Robo style swim baits. Okay, so the hook slot area is what he's reinforcing. Rocco, hey, Mr. Bass, I went bow fishing in Florida. Four stingrays, two mullets, and two sheep heads. Dude, that's crazy. I got a buddy uh, that works uh, in, in my company with us down in Florida, and he does, I think he does spear fishing. I know he uh, he gets uh, the um, snorkel on and dives in and uh, 
then he goes swimming after him. And I think it's a, I think it's spear fishing. He does. He's hooked. He's addicted. Well, if it makes you guys feel any better, my buddy Dean called me yesterday afternoon. And after work, we went to two different fishing holes and didn't get a single bite. Not a single bite. It happens, man. It is not the end of the world. Because I did have one special night a few days ago where in about, let's see, I got on the water about 5 p.m., and by 7 o'clock, I had 31 bass caught. It goes both ways. Hmm. Got to take the good with the bad. And, of course, after catching 31 in two hours, the next uh, day or two, whenever that was, uh, we went back out. I thought, man, I got this dialed in. I got the right baits. I know exactly what the fish are doing. And not much has changed in the weather pattern. This is going to be awesome. Nothing. Nothing. It was brutal. JB, how you doing, buddy? Ah, uh, Jatavius is back. Jatavius, guess what, man? You would have won a prize if you'd stayed on uh, Saturday night. Because you, you you may not know because you're one of the newer guys, but one of our guys landed on the angel. And if you land on the angel, like a guardian angel, you get a prize and you get to pick someone in the comments to win a prize. And he picked you, but you are not here to claim it, buddy. So somebody else got the prize. So hopefully we'll see you Saturday. Maybe you'll win something. Mr. Bash, you like chatterbaits and spinnerbaits? If so, you got to pick up some slow town custom lures. I will remember that. I'm going to talk about chatterbaits some tonight. Uh, I know some of you guys are chatterbait pros, but I know I got some young guys and some new guys on here that maybe have never fished them. So because I've been having so much luck on the chatterbait lately, I thought I would talk about it a little bit. Yeah, let's hear this. Uh, get your fish on. What's the trash can slam? I saw him telling telling uh, Eric or back there. That's the trash can slam. Ronald, how's it going, John? Jan, Jan, I kind of fooled you guys. Sorry about that. I know I said six thirty, but I'm probably not going to be able to do that this early because the last two Wednesdays in a row, I haven't been able to get home from work in time. So probably be more like 7.30-ish. Jan's back talking Hawaiian again. See those new six cents sacks for plastics. Oh yeah, you talking about these bait bags? Six cents fishing bait bags. Check them out. I think this is the larger bag. Pretty cool looking, huh? One thing I like about this, I've bought bait bags for a long time. And in the old days, the old bait bags, uh, there was no place to identify what was in it. So I really like that the newer bags now have a place where you can put a label. So I can open this up here and... Not have to open because sometimes you'll have five, six, seven of these bags in the boat. It's a total pain trying to remember what's in all of them. We got all my six cents soft plastics in here. Look at that. Pretty cool looking bag, too. I got this one and I got a gray one and I got a black one. They feel really, really heavy duty also.
FYI, Mr. Bass China is now stealing the jackhammer design and selling them for $3.99. I've been thinking about doing some of these ripoff uh, bait comparisons and just see how they compare because some of them might be really good. I don't know. Uh, just like we've been talking about, the Dark Sleeper has a knockoff China brand, and apparently a lot of guys are buying them. Here we go. Rocco string ray mullet catfish is the trash can slam. <laughs> right on. See, in my part of the world, a stingray is uh that's exotic. <laughs> Received my four hundred dollar order from Taco Warehouse today, but still haven't opened it yet. Oh man, I don't know how you can hold off on that. Yeah, John, it looks like a giraffe pattern on that bag, doesn't it? The old giraffe pattern, which you see a lot of giraffes out at the lake. Do, 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 do. Barker Basson says it looks like a leopard print. Yeah, I know it. Uh, AliExpress, if you guys are looking for cheap knockoff baits, Alibaba is the parent company, or I don't know, there might even be a parent company over uh, Alibaba. I think there is. It's a huge Chinese company. And then they have this other company called AliExpress. And uh, they sell all kinds of knockoff, counterfeit, copycat, everything, not just baits. I mean, anything under the sun. A Yeti cup. I guarantee you, you can find a $2 knockoff Yeti cup if you want. They prefer remix. Gotcha. Yep, it's semantics, but uh, <laughs> it's a knockoff. Thanks, Woody. I sure did, man. I got that buzz bait out of the tree. I wasn't leaving that behind. And the way I got it is uh, I've got an eight foot tall anchor spike in my micro power pole anchor. And I took that anchor spike out and then I was able to reach it and I got it out. What's this about a depth bull shooter? Oh, dude. You got you a Depths Bull Shooter. Man, I'd be cracking that open. I'd like to see that. You need to put it on Instagram and send it to us so we can see what color pattern you got. Those things are beautiful. That's what this is a bull shooter right here. Careful now. Don't want to get a hook in your hand. The Depths Bull Shooter. Is that pretty or what? Look at that chin. That's quite the bait right there. <laughs> Mr. Blass, oh, plan on sending you a budget challenge package here in the near future. Budget challenge package. That sounds cool. Henry's Henry's chasing white bass. You know the funny the fun thing about white bass for those of you guys who don't fish them much is they school up like crazy. You can find if you can find a white bass somewhere, the odds are you can catch multiples. Just fish after fish after fish. They're really fun. A lot of times they're a lot smaller though, although I've caught some fairly big ones. Well, I'd say this is personal preference, John Smith. For every guy that, that swears by depths, you'll find another one that swears by something else. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty big bait uh, for sure. White bass catching 60 in an hour. Why not? It is a lot of fun. All right, let's see. What got me thinking about this chatterbait thing was two things. One is the fact that I've been catching on tons of chatterbait bladed jig fish. And the other is this unboxing I did that came out today. It had this Guggen clickbait bladed jig in here. Some of you already said on the comments that you like it. You fished it. To me, this looks like a real goofy, squirrely, oddball chatterbait. I don't really see the point in... I do see the point in trying to improve things. But I'm telling you, the jackhammer... The Thunder Cricket, my Rumble Fish that I'm in love with, they don't need perfecting, man. They're, they're awesome. And this little wire here with the three little balls like you have on a spinnerbait, it looks like you might get a lot of, a lot of chatter, a lot of almost clacking like you might get with a buzzbait. But I've been asking some people, and they say it doesn't really have the same action. It's not really that great. But a couple of you guys have said it is. The other thing that kind of bugs me about this is a regular a regular uh, chatterbait. Look at this. This is a jackhammer. And you can see the blade is attached to the head. But look how the, head, look how the blade, the bait moves when I hold the blade. It's because this thing swivels freely on the blade. And I think that swiveling action is part of what makes a chatterbait or a bladed jig so good. Now look at this. It's completely stiff and stationary, this attachment. There's no, it's complete, there's no wobble at all. The only wobble you've got is on this metal piece and it does wobble but it uh, I, I just don't know about this but i'd like to hear what you guys think if you've already caught tons of fish on them and out there slaying them because hard-headedness can cost you fish yeah john that is crazy i'd like to call that dude and ask him uh, I'm sure that was a fluke because I've caught big crappie on big bass baits before, but man, it's, it's almost always an accident. So that was on that monster bass flyer out of the species box. He, he definitely had a nice crappie with a bladed jig in its mouth. So it looked, looked impressive. The one bait I've been waiting two years for from Depths is the Evoke Zero, which is a whopper plopper subsurface buzz bait hybrid crank bait. It's an awesome ass bait, and Kim Ken gets beasts on it. I'll have to watch that. I have never tried that. That the old Evoke Zero sounds cool. Oh, Henry sent me pics of his white bass. Let me see if I can see if I can get his message here. Oh yeah, check this out. Henry sending us pics of his white bass. I'll share the screen here. How about that? Looking good, Henry. 
Jay, I tried the clickbait for the first time last night. Got it caught about 15 foot in a tree. <laughs> that sounds like me. Still figuring out my casting games. White bass in it. All right, let me see. He's got, I think he's got another one here. Let me, let me see there. Yeah. Nice. Looking good, dude. Looking good. <clears throat> Barker leaving. See you, man. Have a good one. So I would say, just from my own experience, I still like the jackhammer the best. That's probably my favorite lure in all colors, sizes. I love my rumble fish, but I'm almost out of them, and they don't make them anymore. Here's what they look like. If you've never seen a rumble fish, it comes in this tube. And uh, this is a pure chartreuse one. It's called sour apple. But these dudes do not make them anymore. So that's a pretty, pretty bright. Very bright chartreuse. One of the things I really like about the Rumblefish guys is they have colored blades. This is a green blade, chartreuse colored blade, and that blade really works great. They also have holes in the blade, and I think that does something to the vibration that makes it a little different, and these really do work good. Machek, how you doing, man? Yeah, Clint, we'll restart for you, man. No problem. Clint's fashionably late as always. And uh, he's 23 minutes late this time. But I kind of started off, off kilter, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for that. Man, I like this one. Night Fisher Custom Baits. Two models I live by. Mr. Bass is the most legit and real talk YouTube fisherman. Nice. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Smash the kitty, then leave the city. Okay. Cool. What's this here? I've smoked fish for the last three days with bed rig Ted Tickler. Oh my goodness. Are you fishing beds, Theodore? Dude, if that's what he's saying. I uh I'm jealous. Man, I love bed fishing. It's it's a little harder here because our water's not the clearest. I gotta go down to somewhere like Table Rock. There you go. Yeah, the old rumble fish. Here's another one that my buddy, uh, it, he's sponsored by these guys. And I, so I've tried several of theirs. It's called the Nasty Thumper. And I like, I like these. Uh, they, these are, these are pretty, pretty good. Finch Nasty. These guys are down in Texas, Clint. So I don't know if you ever fished any of these or not. This is their Rayburn Red color blackhead oh Rocco sending me photos now too let's check out Rocco's photos then here let me see what he's doing All right. 
Not a good pick, but those are my stingrays. They look like a pair of shoes. Oh, now once again, they look like a, a floppy hat. I have to show you guys this. Here's Rocco's stingrays. A couple of floppy hats on the table. <laughs> Those are Rocco's. Yeah, Clint, uh, they're in Texas. I don't know how big of a company they are, but my buddy, uh, I've had him on a couple of my shows, uh, Joe from Texas. He, he likes them. You're right, Jan. 23 minutes is a new record for Clint. The Z-Man black and blue chatterbait. So one of the things I was doing fishing, I uh, was in some dark water the other night, and I had a red and black chatterbait tied on that Burley get, uh, gave me. And uh, most of the fish are off beds fishing the TRD ticklers. The uh, Burl in the Burley box. If you guys watch that video of what Burley sent me, he sent me a Z-Man cross eyes chatterbait, and it uh, it was called like red chili or chili pepper or something, chili craw. Or... It's a red, red and black, uh, red and dark brown uh, chatterbait, and I had that tied on because I was create. I was doing a video, making a video for trying to fish the lures that Burley sent me. And uh, I was able to catch fish on uh, several of Burley's lures. And then there's a few I couldn't catch any fish on that day. And the chatterbait was one of them, but the water was pretty dirty. And that red and black worked okay, but I had a red trailer on there. So I wonder if I got one of those trailers here. So what I did is I uh, I switched and put a black trailer on on this red chatterbait. It's not this one, but it was the one he gave me. And man, the bite just went bank just like that. They really started slamming it with that black black uh, trailer. And that's a good point. It's something to remember when you're fishing is that uh, sometimes just mixing up the color a little bit will, will get you more bites. The Rays put up a good fight, caught a 90-pound bull ray back in the day off 25-pound mono. 45 minutes. Wow. That sounds like a battle right there. Big DD's in the house. And outside world. Outside world's been fishing the clickbait, it sounds like. <coughs> Jan's fishing fish that uh, catching fish I've never heard of, the Creval Jack. Pull the tight line and pluck it like a guitar string. <laughs> That's crazy. Try to bait still good in clear water. Or are they mainly using dirty water? I throw them in all, all water clarities. My check. All water clarities. Fish them around grass, and I fish them around wood a lot, and they get hung up on wood fairly easy, but I still fish them around wood because that's where the fish are. So I just figure I'm going to lose them sometimes. That is the way it goes. Ever tried the Z-Man custom chatterbait? Uh, heck yeah.
the plain old chatterbait works fine and it's cheap. You know, it's how much is it now? Three fifty or four bucks, maybe. Uh, the price just keeps going down on the chatterbait, and uh, you don't have to have the jackhammer to catch fish. And of course, the thunder cricket's good. It's a decent one. It's got some good vibration to it. The blade on the thunder cricket shaped a little different. Like here's a thunder cricket right here that I've been fishing with the Zacco trailer. See how natural that looks? That's a really nice looking natural bait. Makes sense that that's going to do well. So this is kind of what makes the Thunder Cricket unique is their blade. It's shaped really different compared to say like a jackhammer blade. Of course, these both are great bladed jigs. And then you can see my Rumblefish blade, how that compares. It's the one with the holes I was telling you about. And then here's the clickbait. Look at the head on that thing. It's giant. It, it dwarfs, dwarfs the head of this. You could completely cover it up. So kind of interesting. What are your favorite trailers for your for your chatterbaits? Low confidence, Theodore, man, you just got to throw them, throw them, throw them. And once you start catching them, your confidence will go up. There are certain techniques, though. Uh, one of the questions that uh, I answered in the Burley video, we asked each other was, what's the one technique lots of people catch fish on, but you don't normally catch fish on? And I was talking about uh, the swim jig. And the swim jig is one of those things that uh, you could say, I don't have a ton of confidence on it. The Razor Shad. Yeah, the Razor Shad's a nice trailer. I've got some of those. They're very durable, obviously. Anything from Z-Man, super durable. Paddle tail swim baits. Rage Menace. I'm telling you, I throw the Rage Menace a lot. In fact, check this out. Here's the, this is not a, a chatterbait, but just to show you, this is the swim jig that Burley sent me. And look what I got on for the trailer. Rage Menace. Dude, I was slaying them on this thing with this Rage Menace. They loved it. They loved this. This was getting me as many, if not, in fact, for a while, it was getting me more bites than the chatterbait was. That's the day I caught the 31 fish. I was catching them on this. This is a Cumberland Pro Lures compact uh, swim jig with a Rage Menace on it. So I agree with you, John. I use Rage Menaces all, in all kinds of different ways. I separate the claws. You get different action either way. And there's sometimes when you're really need to let a real subtle action. And then I would keep the claws together. But a lot of times, especially as the water gets warmer, I'll break them apart. Yeah, you can, you can rig the Rage Menace either way, horizontally or vertically. You're gonna, it, it works either direction. But if you want a, a more subtle, uh, less vibrating profile, then the vertical presentation is the way to go. Man, Night Fisher, I, I, that is not a bad choice. It really is not. The Rage Menace is so versatile. It makes an incredible trailer of any kind. It could be a spinnerbait trailer. It could be a chatterbait trailer. It could be a swim jig trailer. It could be a jig trailer. 
Uh, you can fish it Texas rig. You could fish it on a Carolina rig. You can flip and pitch it. You can do, you can Ned rig uh, that thing. You could shaky head it. You could, there may not be a soft plastic technique. I don't know about drop shotting it. I probably wouldn't drop shot it, but man, you're talking, <laughs> it's crazy. It is really crazy uh, how much you can do with that thing. You could put it on a, uh, a little swim bait head and uh, or a little ball head jig and swim it just like you would a little uh, swim bait. It's as versatile as they come. And there's something, I think it is a fish catcher. And I think it's because there's just not much to it. It's like the Cinco. Why is the Cinco so incredible? It's just not much to it. There's not a lot of action. It's very subtle. Fish like subtle stuff. Uh, I just got to finish editing it, Henry, and then uh, I'll, I'll be uh, putting it out. It's already like an hour long, you know, an hour long just catching one fish after the other. I love it, but a ton of, a lot of people get bored with you just catching fish after fish after fish. Um, I try to talk on the water. I try to explain things. I try to keep it interesting, but it's hard to keep attention. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how to, scale down the video enough to keep it interesting to watch. Dude, we got a PB in the house. 4.56 to 8.66. That's awesome. Are you saying that your previous PB was 4.56 and your new PB is an 8.66? Because an 8.66 is a giant. Just open one of the $3.99 Chinese jackhammers. Feels pretty legit. Interesting. Well, go fish at night, Fisher, and then uh, come back Saturday night and tell us, tell us what you think. Dude, send me, DM me a picture of your PB, man. We'll put it on the screen. Cybot LL. Cybot LL. Cybot LL. Let me show you my uh, my Instagram in case you need to know what it is at Mr. Bass TV. Chinese jackhammer, hand-tied skirt, probably only a four-aught hook. Yeah, Jan, I could do two parts. It's sort of the same stuff, though. Um, so I don't know. What are some good ways to target bass feeding on bluegill? Let's see here. Here you go. <laughs> uh, that's one way. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of other ways to target fish feeding on bluegill, though. Um, especially when they're bed fishing, you know, the bass hate the bluegill. The bluegill just hover. They just hover around the beds, hover around the nests, and they they kind of poke in, poke in, poke in, poke in, poke in, trying to eat the eggs. And so, if you watch a you if you watch a bed a, a bedding bass, they'll literally just be zip zip around the circle, around the bed, around the bed, around the bed, trying to run. It is amazing. Four hours and hours a fish protecting that bed, guarding that bed, will just constantly be trying to scare off the, 
the bluegill. It's it's amazing, man. They're relentless. The bluegill are relentless, and the and the bass garden the beds that are usually relentless too. Here's your tip. Match the hatch, throw lures that have are in bluegill colors. Exactly. So like here's one right here that I love. This is <coughs> one of my favorite colors. Brett Height Delight. This is very bluegillish looking. Let's see if I got another one here. There's other, I don't have another one handy, but bluegill colors are great. Matt's telling you the same thing. Any anything that has a bluegill pattern, like crankbaits or swim baits. True. Like I have one uh, pond uh, that I keep stocked that uh, I've done several of my videos on. And the only thing in that pond are crawdads, tadpoles, that kind of stuff that get in naturally, and bass and bluegill. There's only bluegill. So when I go fish that uh, little lake, little pond, uh, you'll notice that I throw bluegill colored baits a lot. That being said, I also, after a while, will switch it up and start throwing a white one, a shad colored one. Maybe a sexy shad, or this this one here is one I like to throw a lot. Little white and chartreuse, maybe a little little yellow in it. And even though there's no white bait fish, there's there's nothing white in there. Uh, they will hit. They will hit those white lures. Um, But always start with something, I would say, always like they're saying, start with something that looks bluegillish. Same thing for worms, you know, fish weren't for worms. And if it's got bluegill colors, it doesn't seem to matter that it's not shaped like a fish at all. The bass will go after it. Uh. Gonna try the new evergreen buzz bait. Just got his yesterday. Sounds fun. <clears throat> Gotta thank everyone on this channel for teaching me about the Mega Bass brand. <laughs> oh man. Sorry, dude. That's like my buddy sent me a picture uh, yesterday of his son, Peyton, who's probably, I think he's probably 14, 15 now. Uh, he might be mad because I may be off, but he's a, he's a teenager, young teenager. And uh, he just got his first mystery tackle box in the mail. And he sent me a picture of it. My son's super excited. He just got his first mystery tackle box, and I just sent him back a message. Careful. Be very careful. It can snowball. It can get very expensive. And addictive. How do you fish deeper water like the middle of a pond? It's very difficult. Well, you're right. It is very difficult, especially if you're not in a boat. <clears throat> it's inc incredibly difficult. So if I'm bank fishing a pond, which I love pond fishing and I love bank fishing, I fish all the edges first, all the obvious points on the edges like lay down stumps, logs, rock piles, uh, little points, jetties, indentations, anything, grass lines, weed lines. And then after I do all that, I, then I think about the middle. And I don't think about the middle at all if I can get bites on the edges. 
If you can't get bites on the edges and you know they're out in the middle, then the problem you got, hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Oh, Gary's here. N5 KDA, how you doing, man? Uh, <clears throat> the problem with getting out in the middle is they're probably suspended if they're out in the middle. Most of the year, they're probably not going to be on the bottom out in the middle. So you got to think about baits. Remember the water column thing I talked about before? Start at the top. Cover the top maybe with a top water, you know, some sort of a walking bait, a buzz bait, a whopper plopper, something that uh, you can run along the top. A frog. Frog's good. And then if you're not getting bit there, then go down into the middle middle column. Jerk bait, spinner bait, um, swim bait, small swim bait, like a kai tech, that kind of thing. And then you can think about the bottom. And if you're fishing the bottom, what are some of those bottom lures? Jig, shaky head. It just depends if you can get far enough out for that kind of stuff. And then through process of elimination, you might start getting bit on one of those. And then when you start getting bit on it, repeat the process. Here you go. Bomb a lipless crankbait out there. Yeah. <clears throat> you can yo-yo a lipless too, and that kind of helps you cover more than one water column. Yeah, a lot of wood causes problems with snags. I love worm fishing. I really do. Fishing a worm is one of my favorites. So fishing the billet, the, the uh, burly box the other day, I caught them on the buzz bait and I caught them on this little swim jig. And uh, then I caught them on that tomahawk twin tail worm by Missile Baits. And it was very popular. The fish liked it quite a bit. So that's a worm. I don't know if any of you guys have tried it. It's basically a curly tail worm, but it's split in two. So it's got two curly tails instead of one. And uh, it worked very well for me, and that was a pond I was fishing. Let's see, what was I gonna talk to you guys about? I told you about the, let's see, I put up a couple of videos today. I did the, um, I published the Monster Bass box and the, I think the multi the multi species box and the mystery tackle box box, and then I've got the jewel baits box coming out. I told you guys about this fishing tools box. I got the video done of that, and it'll be coming up here in the next couple of days. I'll probably publish it. Um. I showed you guys in the last uh, on the last live stream those Plano guide series bags that I did videos on. I've got them coming out in a in probably in a week or two. Mr. Bass, do you like using big worms for post spawn? I like throwing worms all the time, and big worms are a good option in the post spawn for sure. And in the post, post, post spawn, in the, in the real dog days of summer, when the fish have moved out, you can fish a really big worm. And uh, if, you, if you live on the Tennessee Valley or some of these other places that have 
nice ledges for ledge fishing you can fish a really really big 10 inch or 12 inch worm on the ledges as well and that's really fun uh daniel i did film the burly box fishing video but i haven't posted it yet it'll come out in a few days a few days I hear you, man. Seven and a half inch worm is a great confidence bait because you can do so much with it. Texas rig it and swim it, drag it, hop it, and fish just love worms. They love them. If you could only have two chatterbait colors, what would they be? White and green pumpkin, probably. But if I can have three, white, green pumpkin, black and blue. But this pretty much goes for about any bait out there. You got to have a white. You got to have a white color for most, most uh, lures. And then you got to have a natural color, like a green pumpkin or a watermelon, or watermelon red. And then... You really need the third choice would be a dark color, black, black and blue, something really dark. Those are kind of like the three standard colors. If you could, if you had to narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, this is a, an ongoing joke here. Just wanted to know if you're slaying it on the double O2 color. I'm loving the number two. The number two was a, Awesome color. Roger Hall's in the house. How's it going, dude? The old number two. Shad, sunfish, and black and blue is what he's saying. I'm sure he's not saying black and blur. Same sort of thing. Shad is white. Sunfish, that's your more natural color. Bluegill color, green pumpkin color, black and blue for dark water. It's not, it's not rocket surgery, you know. Uh, I was talking to uh, Get Your Fish On today, and we were just talking about the fact that so many times so many times uh the color doesn't matter we get sucked into the color now of course sometimes color absolutely matters but not as much as you think there are some dudes who really only threw a few colors like uh g-man g-man pretty much uh if, if you watch his videos he'll tell you 99% of the time he's throwing when, when he's fishing a jig, he's just throwing a plain brown jig. Doesn't care about the water clarity, any of that. He just throws a brown jig almost all the time. And there's a lot to that. You can get so sucked down the old color rabbit hole that you got 1400 different colors. You'll never use them all. Believe me, I know from experience. What is your, Jeff's in the house. How you doing, man? Preferred line color. Well, what top type line are you talking about? If I'm fishing braid, I like bright. Because uh, most of my finesse techniques, uh, it's feel, but it's also line watching. You're watching that line move, and my eyes aren't great anyway. So I like those bright braid colors. And uh, I've used orange, I've used yellow, and most of the time now I'm using this chartreuse greenish color I really like. But if you're talking fluorocarbon and uh, mono, fluorocarbon's clear. And, you know, you want it clear for a reason. The throw fluorocarbon because it's supposed to be invisible to the fish's eye. So... I've heard gimmicky things, and I think they are gimmicky. Like, for example, uh, 
this red mono that came out years ago. And they were saying red is the perfect color mono because uh, red is the first color to disappear in the water as it starts to go down, as it starts to get away from the sun. Okay. Uh, all right. There was, there's logic behind that. They, you know, they explain this logic about this red line is perfect for that kind of stuff. All right. Then you have the exact same fishing companies telling you, you need red hooks. You need red hooks on your baits because they key in on that red. That red is a, is it, they really notice that red. Okay. So what is it? Is it, does red line disappear in the water? Well, why do red hooks not disappear in the water? Uh, you know, I mean, line color is kind of overrated to tell you the truth. Here's the trick. You want the best line you can find that the fish cannot see. You don't want them seeing it. So just look at it. And if you think it's, you're going to see it in the water, don't get it. Um, so what do I do with the bright braid? I always have a fluorocarbon leader most of the time super clear. They can't see the braid. They can just see, all they can see is your bait. That's what you want. Juan, do chatter baits lose action if I tighten them with a barrel swivel interlock snaps? See, I think he's saying if he ties them on with a barrel swivel interlock snap. Well, I would say that is going to mess with the action I mean, these already have, like, say this chatterbait here, it already has a snap on it that you that you tie to. I don't know if you can see that. So are you saying you attach another snap to that? Because I definitely wouldn't do that. Uh, but most chatterbaits and lipless baits, they always come with something to tie to. And they're, it's almost always a snap. See this Finch Nasty? It's got a snap on the end, that black snap. Am I missing your question there? Or uh... Now this uh, clickbait doesn't have a snap on it. It's got this wire, like a spinnerbait wire that you would tie to. I guess you could connect a snap to that. I don't know if that would matter or not. <laughs> I agree with you, Gary. When the bite is on, color does not mean much. Most of the time, there's a lot of truth to that. Brown on brown with a brown craw. <laughs> right on, Roger. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, we get sucked into the color thing, and I, I'm totally guilty of it. Uh, but really, how much does it matter? I don't know. The only way you, you know for sure is if you got two buddies, both fishing the identical lure side by side. One of you put on one color, the other put on the other color. And as long as one guy's not at the front of the boat getting fresh water, if you can do it some way so that you both have equal shot at the water, that's probably the best experiment to, to determine what color is working that day better than the other. I use the decoy Nico hook or Neko hook. Interesting. Yeah, Jan, I don't know if I believe in the camo lines to tell you the truth. I'm not the end all be all expert by any means, but does camo line work in the water? I mean, come on. I was in the army for seven years and uh, we wore camo to hide ourselves in the bush, in the trees, in the, and if you were, if you, the guys that were stationed up in the, uh, where there was snow, they wore white clothes, but you would not wear camo in the snow doesn't make sense camo line to me is kind of like wearing camo in the snow 
I, I don't get how camo colored line is uh, more stealthy or harder for the fish to see. I would think they could see it just fine. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Henry, I was not saying red hooks don't work uh, in, in case I got misunderstood there. I paint red accents on my bait. I do red gill plates. I put red dots on lures. I believe in red. And I believe in red hooks sometimes. I'm just saying this is kind of one of those funny things, you know, red line you can't see, red hooks you can. I think they can see red. And I think they hone in on red at times. I never use a snap swivel, Roger. Um, but I don't believe that you should never use a snap swivel. I just don't do it. I just, <laughs> I know I hear lots of guys say you should never use a snap swivel uh, because it's a failure point and it can break off on your line. That is true. But man, if you're not fishing for a hundred thousand dollars, who cares? Uh, if you like using a snap swivel and you can change lures quicker by using a snap swivel then use a snap swivel. Uh, or just use a snap. Uh, it's not going to really change except on super, super, very extremely rare finicky days. It is not going to change the way the fish bites the lure. I really don't believe it will either. And I'll tell you, here's, a, here's another way to, to, uh, here's the logic between behind don't put something like a swivel on your lure because it's also, it's, it could, it, it's a failure point. That's one. And then the other is you don't want more stuff up there that the, the fish uh, might see, but then go up North where you're fishing around toothy critters, musky and pike and these fish with the big teeth. What does every fisherman do up there? They put a steel leader, like a 12 inch long steel leader. It's bright and shiny ahead of the lure. And guess what? The fish still hit the lures. Now, would they hit? Would you get more bites without a bright, shiny steel leader? Yeah, you probably would. But kind of like Gary was saying earlier, when the fish are biting, a lot of times you can tie straight braid. You could try that straight, bright, green fluorescent braid I got to the lure. And a lot of times you can still catch fish. In fact, a lot of the pros, if you watch them when they're flipping and pitching, if they flip and pitch in super heavy color or cover or super dark water, a lot of times they'll tie straight braid to their lure. Now, they don't do that um, if there's any water clarity because braid, they can see, the fish can see braid. All right, Matthew's teaching us about Nico Reagan, it looks like. What's my favorite brand company and pound test? I personally love Power Pro and use 50 pound test. Well, I've never fallen in love with just one company's braid. I like Suffix 832 a lot. I like Power Pro. In fact, I've got some of their newest super slick two or whatever it's called. Um, I've tried a lot of the different brands and I usually end up gravitating back towards that suffix 832 most of the time, most of the time, but I do throw a lot of power pro, pro as well. Now pound line. I do not throw much braid on bait casters. I hate, braid on a bait caster. So about the only time I use it is I will use it for flipping some. And usually that I've got like 65 pound line on it. I will use it for some really big lure techniques. Sometimes if I think 25 pound fluoro is not going to work, then I sometimes will upgrade. But <clears throat> I mostly use braid for my spinning 
rods and reels. And I pretty much use 15 pound test braid on all my spinning reels. I've tried 10, I've tried 20. I like 15, just kind of the happy medium. Pike are crazy. They bite anything, even if it has a lot of flashy metal in front of the lure. Dude, I know what you're talking about. But smallies, man. Smallies will they'll hit a pink lure. They'll hit an orange lure. <clears throat> Catch fish on straight bait, no problem. Jan says, 18-inch black color steel leader on my medium rod and on my heavy rod, 36-inch steel leader. Three-foot-long steel leader. Dude, Jan's living in another planet. He's throwing three-foot leaders. Ah. Uh. See, right here, today I had one of those days where a lure without a snap got 12 bites and one with a snap got zero. See, that goes totally against what I was saying earlier, and it just, uh, it's not wrong. <laughs> That's the thing, man. There's not one hard and fast rule. You just got to experiment. And a lot of it has to do with confidence. If you're a guy that swears by snaps and you put snaps on everything and you always fish with snaps and you got confidence in snaps, you will still catch fish with snaps on. You will. Now you might catch fewer fish than if you didn't have snaps. If you're in really clear water and the fish are really finicky. But it's a weird phenomenon how if you've got confidence in something, even if it's a little crazy, it still works most of the time. Yeah, that's what I do, Daniel, most of the time. I know there are a lot of guys who don't uh, don't talk about, uh, don't believe you should put braid on spinning rods. Uh, Randy Blockett's one of them. He thinks you should not use braid. But I'm telling you, it's just so much easier. It's so much simpler. The line twist twist almost completely goes away. And I know I've heard him say it, and I've heard others that are diehards on this say, yeah, but look, you get good at you fishing a spinning rod. You, you don't have a lot of line twist problems, and I don't believe that. I think, yeah, you learn to manage it. You learn to deal with it, but you can't eliminate line twist on fluorocarbon or mono and you can just about completely eliminate line twist if you use braid that to me is worth it alone right there okay this is a good question what's a good length for a leader in a spinning setup this goes back to one of the standard answers I answer on many, many questions. It depends. It always depends. Depends on what you're fishing. It depends on the water clarity. It depends on so many different things. But I usually uh, will tie a fluorocarbon leader um, that, like, uh, let's see, I don't. I think I have a spinning rod sitting here. Yeah, I do actually. <clears throat> okay, here is a great little setup. If you ever want to catch a lot of fish, try that. The old single tail grub in a pearl, pearl pepper colored smoke. That little bad boy catches fish let me tell you especially on ponds i digress though that's not what we we're talking about if you look at the leader on this rod 
Here's the leader. That's where it stops. Let me see, get my camera right here. This is where it stops. My leader is about three feet long, but I didn't start with a three foot leader. I started, I usually will start my leader here and I'll go the entire length of the rod and then I'll come back down the other side of the rod till I get to about this big guide. I don't really want my knot going into my spool. And so I know uh, that if I have a long leader about, about that length, then most of the time it's not gonna get in the way. It's not gonna be a problem. And then as you start to get wear and tear here and you have to cut off and tie a new knot, you can keep taking chunks of your leader off over time without having to continually tie new leaders. So this leader's three foot now, and it was probably 10 feet or longer at one time. That's usually the trick I follow with my leader. And Jeff, if you're asking about the color braid that I use, here it is right there. That's it. It's my favorite color. I can see it very well in the, in the uh, water. What kind of knot do I tie on my leader? We had a, we had, this was one of our conversations the other day. We got, we really got into that. The old, what's the best knot to connect a leader to braid? And my answer is I do a uni to uni, uni to uni. David uses a four to six foot leader. Uni to uni. To me, it's just fast, it's easy, it's reliable, it's a very solid knot. The knot doesn't get very big, it passes through the guides fine. Um, so that's pretty much what I throw. And my floral carbon, most of the time, is Seaguar. I like Invisex and Abrazex, and that's what I use most of the time. I used to fish with Sunline, but uh, used to break on me a lot. So I've kind of gotten away from Sunline. I still have some that I use that I'm using up my spools, you know. <coughs> oh yeah, Jan, that was, this was part of the topic. Just crimp the line on. We were gonna create a crimping tool that you could just crimp the line and then you wouldn't have to worry about knots. I thought that was a good idea. It didn't, we had big plants on the show, but uh, by the time the show was over, I think we'd forgotten about it and moved on. Okay, how many wraps do you do on a double uni knot? Well, the regular uni is also my standard knot that I use 90% of the time. And I do a minimum of six wraps on the knot. And I go up from there. Uh, if the line, the smaller the line is, the more wraps I will, will turn. And uh, so if I get into eight pound, six pound test, I may do 10 wraps. But for heavier line, six wraps. I don't go below six usually though. Um, I know some guys will do four or five, but I'm, I'm uh, six is about as low as I'll go. <laughs> yeah, this is the, the line I was talking about a few minutes ago. Super slick eight version two. I've got some of that. Um, seems to cast well. I've never tried the Sunline, or I've tried Sunline, obviously. I've never tried Plasma. I don't know about that. Uh, 
Yeah. So here's the deal about not strength. Again, you fishing for a hundred thousand dollars, maybe it matters, but let's say that you've got a knot that has 95% knot strength. And then you have a knot below it. That's 90% knot strength. And another one that's 89 or 88. Does that really matter? Hmm. If you're fishing for a hundred thousand, maybe so, but I don't care a whole lot about knot strength. I, and I don't want to make it sound like I don't care about knot strength. Obviously I do not want my knots breaking, but I've had fished the uni and the double uni for years and years and years. And I'm very comfortable with its strength. I do not worry about it breaking off. Seagar Smackdown or Diamond Braid. <clears throat> What's your go-to knot to tie heavier floral line, line to line, line to lure? Uni knot. I still tie the uni knot. On occasion, I'll use the Palomar. I'll use the San Diego Jam knot. Um, if I'm flipping, sometimes I will use the, um, see this happens every show. I got to forget something one time, the knot that you wrap around your hook shank. You guys know the name of that knot. Um, I will use that flipping big flipping hooks. That's pretty much it. I keep it pretty simple. I mean, I've tried the FG, the Alberto, the all a bunch of the other knots. And uh, I like I like the uni knot. Good question. What about when you're using hundred dollar baits? I still throw the uni knot. I still tie the uni knot. It'll be the uni or the Palomar, one of the two. Gary likes the old super glue on his knots. I did that for a while and I just never seemed to notice a difference. Yeah, so David, is the nano braid different than nano fill? Because we had a conversation about nano fill last week. And uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of nano fill. I tried it for quite a while. So is nano braid something different? I just don't know about it. Snell knot, Mr. Honeybee, you're right. John, you're right. Snell knot is the flipping knot. And it's not too hard to tie. I use a loop knot as well, you know, for top water plugs. So, David, yes, it is the same, or yes, it is different. Oh, gotcha. Nano fills Berkeley, Nano Braid is Suffolk. Okay, so Nano Braid is different. That's right. I should have known that. I did know that, that Berkeley is Nano Fill. Nano Braid, never tried it. I, I just do that 832 stuff, unless they, I don't know what they call it. I just call it 832. Let's see here. Was I going to tell you guys anything else? Oh, I was going to tell you. I don't know if you noticed on any of my videos, but my trailer that I carry my kayak on, I bent the tongue on it. Don't know if you guys noticed that, but I was driving somewhere rather quickly one day. And it was a warm day. And I had the window down. And there was an important piece of paper in my truck and it blew out the window. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta have that paper. So I stopped immediately and uh, to get it, to, to get the paper and I ran out and retrieved the paper. And then I had to, I had to back up really quickly and turn around. I had to do that actually to get the paper. <laughs> And uh, I was so focused on that paper, I forgot I had the trailer on <laughs> just long enough to back right into the tongue and bend it. 
So I bent the tongue by backing up without paying attention. And uh, I even have a backup camera on the truck. It didn't matter. I was so worried about that paper. So I bent my tongue and I ordered a replacement tongue and I installed it over the weekend. It looks pretty good. I got it fixed. So if you see any of my videos with a bent tongue, you'll know what happened. Although my new videos will have a straight one. That's a good little trailer too. If you're ever looking for a kayak trailer, it is called the Malone Malone trailer. This is the company. And you buy them, it basically just comes in a box and you put the thing together. And it's very stout, very sturdy once you put it together. It even has leaf springs on it that you just attach. You know, it's 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 got nice suspension. It does not bounce around at all. So if you're think if you're looking for a nice kayak trailer, those Malone guys, they got some good looking trailers. Oh, how many fish have I caught? Nobody's asked me yet, but I thought I would tell you where my count is on my thousand fish challenge. A hundred and eighty four fish. And I've modified this challenge a little bit because I think I told you guys at the beginning I was going to catch a thousand bass and I changed my mind. I'm going to catch a thousand fish. Um, not to say that I'm going to try to go find a school of white bass and catch as many as I can to try to get to a thousand because I'm usually fishing with a purpose. But I got to thinking, I have uh, a lot of times I fish for crappie. Like I was fishing for crappie the other day, doing that video with the crappie mini crankbait. And uh, it doesn't make any sense to not count those fish in my thousand fish challenge. And then I go to Canada and fish for pike and walleye. And it doesn't make any sense not to count those fish. They're, they're fish and they're a challenge to catch. And uh, I'm going to go to Alaska and fish for salmon. And I should count those fish as part of my thousand fish challenge. So I'm not going to limit myself to just bass on the challenge. Simon made it. How you doing, man? Yeah, that would be a challenge, John. Catch a thousand different species in a year. <laughs> uh, to do that, I'm going to have to move out where Jan's at. We're going to have to go deep sea fishing. Dad bod, dude, how's it going? Glad to hear it, Simon. Okay. I am giving away one prize tonight. We're doing a baseball hat challenge. And uh, the prize I'm giving away is that uh, Warriors box. We talked about the strange new Warriors box, but some of the baits look pretty decent, especially for free, right? You've got the power grub. Woo. And then you've got this. Uh, you got a jerk bait, a couple of lipless crank baits, a spoon, and a um, jigging. Uh, 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 what do you call that? Blade bait. Blade bait. So whoever wins, gets the question right, is going to get this amazing package of lures. I'm not going to ship it in the box probably, especially if you live in Canada. I'm going to take all the lures out and put them in an envelope. 
But this is the prize tonight. All you got to do is be the first one to guess the baseball team, the minor league baseball team that uh, I am going to be sporting here. So if you guys are ready for the challenge, I will switch hats and let you uh, – uh, Jan, no, it's not the last Warriors box. I canceled my subscription, but I know I'm getting at least one more in the mail. Because if you cancel and you pay ahead of time, they don't give you any refunds. They just say, well, you got to finish what you started. Here's the hat. This is it. What team? What team have we got here? Both the lipless look really pretty decent in that Warriors box, Matthew. All right. The Royals. Okay. Uh, it is not the Durham Bulls. Good, good try. Good try. <coughs> The pinata is the hat, Dad Bod, but that's not the team. Eric got it. The Erie Sea Wolves. This is their pinata hat. So you were right, Dad Bod. It is their pinata hat, but we're always looking for the team, not the hat. So that makes it a little more tricky, although you guys are getting much better at this. Um than you used to. So congratulations, Eric. You are the winner. So, um, Eric, uh, <coughs> DM me at Mr. Bass TV with your address, and I will send that out to you, Eric. Brewer, congratulations. You won the Warrior. Tackle box, box. Ah, yeah. See, sometimes that helps, Eric. You live near the team or go to some of their games, and you can figure it out quicker. We've had a couple of guys. Hey, that's my town. He's wearing a hat for my team, town team, and that makes it real easy. But uh, I try to make it confusing, like throwing a pinata hat in the mix instead, and then you got to dig a little bit. Eric, buddy, I am not going to do that. Uh, what, and I'll tell you why, because I've gotten, I've gotten to the point where so many guys are asking me, hey, will you send this to that guy? I'm just not going to do that anymore. It's too much. It's too much for me to deal with. What I can tell you, though, if you and this goes for all you guys in the channel. If you win, you know, multiple baits and you want to share the love, just send a DM to, to whoever you want to send one to. I'll send them to you and then you send it to them. And then uh, because, you know, I you know, uh, to, to Wednesday night's not as bad, obviously. But on Saturday night, man, I may have 10 different packages I'm sending out. It's just too much. Uh, so. Uh, you are free to share the love, but I'm not going to do it. Plus it's postage. You know, I have to pay extra postage to ship to another person and, uh, I'm not going to do that either, but nice of you to consider it, Eric. And if, if you guys want to hook up and do that, knock yourself out, I'm all for it. I kind of like the pinata hat. I think it looks pretty cool. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see if anybody sent me any. A 
<laughs> Eric, that's Eric's job shipping. Wow. Good deal. Well, I would like to know, Bryson, buddy, the college teams would be easy because you, you just got to remember the name of the college. These are minor league teams, which is actually the pros. They're just part of the farm system feeding the big pro teams. But, dude, not, not many of us know all these teams. I mean, they are weird backwoods teams you know they have they have a lot of strange logos and names and mascots and that, that's kind of what makes them fun uh i don't know Jan. I, I, I let me check i didn't know that he sent it to me let me go back here and see Okay. Nope, I don't see I don't see another 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 one of those. Nope, Jan. I'll check one more time here. My end messages. Instagram's a little squirrely. Where have you guys noticed? If you click on a message, it doesn't go away even after you read it. You kind of have to lift up for my phone. You kind of have to lift up on it to get the thing to actually go away. I don't know if that's me or if it's a real deal. No, he didn't send his PV photo, Jan. Yeah, those clubs are, are kind of fun. They're fun to go to as well. One thing that's kind of fun about the minor league teams is they're much smaller parks, so you feel a lot closer to the team. Uh, I lived up in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska for a few years, and they had a team up there called the Salt Dogs, and uh, they were fun to go to. In fact, they they even had a uh, area in the in the outfield, if I remember, where you could put blankets out there and sit on a blanket in the outfield. And there's not many major league level teams you can do something like that without paying a bunch of extra money. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we're about to wrap her up here. Appreciate you guys getting on tonight and. Uh, Talking a little chatterbait, a little bladed jig fishing. Should we do a bladed jig challenge this week? Um, for those of you who are going to be on Saturday and can fish, it's Wednesday now, so you got Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Take a bladed jig out. See who can catch the most fish on a bladed jig in the next three days. And we'll post it. We'll post it on the channel. Saturday night, you can even send me photos of your best fish if you want. We might do that on Saturday night as part of our spin to win. That sounds like a fun deal. So we will do a chatterbait challenge, chatterbait challenge. And uh, for the person who wins the most, the person who catches the most chatterbait fish, I'll give a special prize to. It'll be the honor system, obviously. Hopefully, nobody on the Mr. Bass crew will lie to us about what he would catch, right? Yeah, smash that like button, guys. Thanks for watching. I am going to wrap it up. And uh, we will see you Saturday night live at 8 p.m. Central. Hope you guys have a good one until then and have some fun fishing. And I will talk to you guys later. We are ending in three, two, one.